What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason. You're watching Backtrack Cinema. Welcome to my 31 Days of Horror. Today's topic is my favorite werewolf film. And I chose Silver Bullet. I mean, I love Silver Bullet to death ever since I was a kid. Is there nostalgia there? Most likely. And I mean, other werewolf flicks too, like I love The Howling, America and Werewolf in London is a classic. Probably the best werewolf change of all time. There's a, a low, more low budget one called Howl. That's really good. I like what Dog Soldiers does. I love this genre. When you say there's a new werewolf film, I'll be watching it. I'll be watching it, man. I love the creature of the werewolf. I, I love all the lore and mythology behind the werewolf on how other movies, you know, do different things with it and all that. This one that we're going to talk about you know, uses the silver bullet to kill it. But yeah, I just love the werewolf genre to death, man. I think that you get great practical effects usually. <laughs> Although there is some actually really good practical effects in here. Just the whole werebear thing. Uh, some people love, some people don't. Now I watched Silver Bullet, not actually in 1985. I think I watched it more in the really early 90s i can remember having a friend over and he brought over he taped it the mini series we watched that but he also brought silver bullet over and so we watched it and that that was fucking terrifying and when you're like 10 years old or whatever 10 11 years old that was terrifying you know um pennywise but silver bullet terrified me too i know a lot of people call this a horror comedy and I'm still kind of, and I do get now watching it, like seeing the comedy in there and everything. Like there are funny characters. Gary Busey's hilarious as hell. You know, the, the one drunk father, he was, watches wrestling. And he's like, oh, that hurts my parts. You know what I mean? It's funny stuff, right? But there's moments in here that terrified me. I mean, when he first um sees the wolf, Corey Haim, and he shoots the firecracker in its eye. He's racing home. And he climbs up to his window and he's tucked in the bed like this. You know what I mean? Like that terrified me because I was like his age when I watched this. You know what I mean? And what makes him, what makes the character so good? He can't walk. And he's like this, um, him and his sister battle this werewolf out with their uncle. And he's at such odds. You know what I mean? He has to, he has to overclimb a huge mountain. You know, no one believes him on all that. So that aspect of the story, I really like. And it's a family drama that deals with family and broken relationships and how these relationships mend themselves through this slasher style werewolf film. Fantastic, right? And the big fans of Stranger Things now, you know, the way Stranger Things and everything like Silver Bullets kind of got that vibe to it because Stranger Things is tapping into that 80s E.T. stuff and you know, and um, something like this, a Silver Bullet. And Silver Bullet's the wheelchair that Uncle Red makes. And we start off with Marty and Jane, brother and sister, our main characters who they start off with tension. Then we got Uncle Red's the uncle and their mother, their, their brother and sister, and they have tension. And some point, about, just as we get to the third act, they're, they're having a barbecue. And you can see a lot of these relationships have mended. And then we get the battle against the werewolf. And in a nutshell, you know, that's that's really the heart of Silver Bullet. The kills I always thought were great in this. It opens up with such great mood and atmosphere. And I think this movie really has that atmosphere, you know what I mean? With the drunk on the train and he gets his head decapitated. I thought that was a cool kill. But the pregnant lady who goes to kill herself with pills and the werewolf does a, does a billy from Black Christmas. He's climbing up the freaking to her window. And the way they shot this, because they didn't like the werebear, they didn't like the way the wolf suit looked. They did a Jaws effect. They they shoot a lot of it in the shadows. They keep the thing in the shadows a lot till the end. And this kill here, it's all in shadow. He's freaking, he's clawing away at her skin and everything. And that shot of her lying on the bed after. Like, in my mind as a kid, I remember her guts hanging out and her freaking neck was split and her neck was cut and everything like that. Um, Again, this movie relies on a lot of suggestion at times like when they um when they find marty's best friend with the kite you never see him you just see the performance of the father finding him and man what a performance i love that performance where he's like i'm you know he's just looking at his son and it, just looking up at his face and how he goes from panic and fear to to complete anger and then you know no he's just it's such a heartfelt performance 
And then there's the whole thing about private justice, everything. He goes in there. I'm going to go get myself some private justice. Uh, 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 the part that really doesn't hold up is when they go after the wolf in the woods. There's fog everywhere, which is great. But that whole thing plays out extremely campy. If you were to make this now, I think you could make that scene actually truly terrifying. And the wolf. The wolf is the town reverend. Reverend Low, right? And it seems like the closer this guy gets to the full moon, the more evil he becomes. But they don't really set up these kind of rules, really. Like, he tells Marty, you know, I the girl he killed was going to commit suicide. He says, I actually saved her by killing her myself. Now she won't go to hell for eternity. Then he's trying to stop the whole town from going out and getting private justice by hunting this wolf down. He's trying to stop them all. But then there's other scenes where... He's after he's going out to freaking kill Marty and everything with no remorse or anything. So his character is kind of all over the place as far as like the motives and everything like that. But I mean, that's something that could have been refined, I guess. I still love this movie, no matter what the little flaws are. And and clearly the wolf, it doesn't look great, but it looks different. It looks unique. Our werebear, you know what I mean? I mean, I've seen wear cats in like True Blood and everything, so why not a wear bear, right? But when Reverend Lowe changes in front of the sheriff in the garage, it, that act that change looks really, really good. The actual change and the church scene, and everything with all changing in the werewolves, that looks really good. It was just the main wolf suit, you know, the main wolf and everything like that didn't look terribly great. But um, the way they keep it in the shadows though really helps the movie out for its atmosphere and everything. So. That stuff's great. And Gary Busey's great in this movie. He's so charismatic and entertaining. And, you know, he's that uncle. He's that awesome uncle who comes and visits you. You want to be like him. Um, and the way he changes, right? When you first meet him, he's just, he's just thrown down wild turkey bourbon. And he looks gross. He looks sweaty. And then by the end of it, he's kind of cleaned up. Looks better. He's dressing better. All that kind of stuff. So I just really like the arc he goes on. But he's... He's completely entertaining in this. And um, Megan follows as Jane. I really like too. And I like the chemistry she had with Corey Haim, but she was really good in this too. The older sister, you know, she's the only one who believes Marty and, you know, trying to convince Uncle Red that, you know, you used to believe in Marty too. You know, you, this, that's werewolves out there. We, you know, this is true. All this stuff that's happening is because of this monster. Right. And uh, I just, I love her performance in that. And really all the performances are really good. One aspect too, I always really liked about this movie too, is the narration of Jane telling the story from her older self. You don't see her, you just hear her, but her voice is really almost haunting. Like pay attention to what I'm telling you kind of thing. Almost like you're sitting around a campfire and she's telling the story and you're focused and you're listening, right? And that great Jay Chataway score. got these really beautiful melodies to it but it's got this creepy synthesizer too to it that's i just absolutely loved and you know there there seems to be more to the puzzle than we know right at the end where marty says i love you jane and then jane's older self says i love you too marty and something she said she could never say before so you're not sure if marty's dead it's ambiguous you're not sure if something happened to marty but she, it's almost like she's telling this story and that Marty's been long dead and gone now. Interesting thing in the movie anyway. And also, I think this movie could be handled really well with a 10 episodes or 12 10 episode series of some kind where every episode would be a killing on the full moon of the wolf. So you build the one character up and then you kill them off at the end, but make it really emotional and make it heartfelt and do that. And then maybe you meet you meet uh, you meet Jane through it. You meet Marty. You meet Uncle Red. Um, I think it could uh, it could use the Flanagan treatment. How about that? He's always down for Stephen King. That's what it could use. It's something like that. Just a one season kind of thing I think would be awesome for this thing. Yeah, guys, Silver Bullet I always loved. It's kind of like a werewolf movie mixed with a slasher, but with family the drama in it. And, and great characters, great score. Just love Silver Bullet to death. And my favorite werewolf film. I know there are better werewolf films. But this is my favorite werewolf film. But what about you? What is your favorite werewolf film? Let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think of Several Bullet. I'll have a good time discussing this episode of 31 Days of Horror. 
I'll put an end card up for related content, all that jazz. Like, share, subscribe if you love this kind of content. My name is Jason. You're watching Backtrack Cinema. I'll see you next time, and I'll see you in the movies. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.